you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. We glorify your name. Lord, we honor you from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. And God, we lift you up now. We magnify you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the wonderful and awesome God that you are. Thank you for looking down on us and fellowshipping with us, communing with us. Thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us to your house safely. God, we give you praise. We thank you because there are so many who wish they could have been here this morning. But for one reason or the other, they were unable to be here. But we're grateful that we're here. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we'd praise you with every one. Because you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. God, you're worthy. And so we give you all praise this morning. Ask that you would minister to each and every one of us as only you can. Speak to our hearts, challenge us that we might hear you. Speak only as you can and we'll be ever so careful to hear you and to heed you. We give you praise, glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand to praise if you will. We're grateful to God that we're in this house. Anybody grateful to be in the house this morning? God is good. I, I don't know, I don't know what some of you have come through this week, but I do know God is good. Circumstances might not have been good, situations might not have been good, but God is good. If you'll stand to your feet and turn your Bibles to Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40, verses 1 through 3. I just want to take a few moments and talk about this this morning. Psalm number 40, verses 1 through 3. Read it if you don't mind. Psalms number 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. 
Verse 2. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Verse 3. And he hath put a new song <laughs> in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For just a little while, just a little while, I want to speak from the subject. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting on the Lord if anybody else agrees with me and you don't mind waiting on the Lord if you don't mind repeating with me say I don't mind waiting, don't mind waiting. On, on the Lord now give him a hand of praise the psalmist starts off by saying I he doesn't say we he says, I, and that must be a personal conviction on behalf of the believer to be able to say, no matter how long it takes God, I'm willing to wait on him. And my brothers and sisters, not many of us have the propensity to wait on God because in this instant society in which we live, we want everything yesterday. We want everything manifested immediately. And God can do it, but sometimes he chooses not to do it. God wants to know sometimes how sincere you are, and then he shows you to yourself. You know, we talk all of this good religious talk. We talk all of the talk that sounds good in church on Sunday morning. But when you have to walk it Monday through Saturday, many times it's a very different story. And sometimes saints of God uh, say these different things and it sounds good and we get excited about it. But the truth of the matter is, if we had to wait on God the way many of the biblical uh, characters of antiquity did, many of us would have given up a long time ago. For instance, the woman with the issue of blood looking for a healing. Twelve long years. She believed God for a healing, but she went doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. But it wasn't until she heard about Jesus that she sought Jesus and could not wait any longer. She made clear that if I could just touch the hem of his garments, I shall be made whole. Here's what she said. I waited long enough. I'm going to take my blessing. And, you know, that's all right, too, if you've got the kind of faith that can bring your blessing to you right now or bring you to your blessing right now because some of us have that kind of faith because the Bible says the kingdom suffereth violence and the violent taketh by force and you've got to recognize every now and then God wants to see how bad do you want a thing how bad do you really want what you're asking God for and we just expect God many times to drop stuff in our lap. And God wants to know how sincere are we to wait on him. Thy will be done. The woman in uh, Luke chapter 13, beginning at the 10th verse, uh, was bent over, had a spirit of infirmity, bent over for 18 years. Now, she wasn't sick, mind you. She had a spirit that bent her over for 18 years. 
She couldn't stand up straight for 18 years, but she came to church every Sunday morning. But one Sunday morning, Jesus was there. And when Jesus saw her, he said, what is wrong with this woman bent over like that? He already knew that that spirit had been on her and bent her over like that. But he had a point to prove because, you know, everybody, and this, this always amazes me because the Bible gives us pictures and illustrations that help us understand even in our present day the reality that is. Uh, the Pharisees and the scribes and all of these other folk that did not like Jesus found themselves being where Jesus was. But it wasn't always to hear him, it was to observe him, to see what he was doing, and to see how the people were responding to him. And so Jesus called that woman, and he healed that woman. Now, on the Sabbath, now let me ask you a question. What day of the week is better to get a healing than on the Lord's day? But the hypocrites, the Pharisees and all of these folk uh, who pretended to be holy got mad, righteously indignated because Jesus healed this woman on the Sabbath day. Jesus said, wait a minute, wait. How many of you have an, an animal? And, you know, if he falls into uh, the well, you would not wait till the next day to go and get him out, but you'll throw a rope down there and pull him up on the Sabbath day. How much more should this woman, this human being, be relieved of this spirit of infirmity that she's carried around for 18 long years? And I need to tell you, she didn't ask the Lord to heal her, deliver her, to set her free. She just showed up to church like she was. And that tells me some of us need to get over ourselves. You know, because if we don't look a certain way or, or something is not right with us, we don't want folk to see us not being perfect and looking our best and doing our best. I, I don't want the folk look at me like this, see me like this. If, listen, if you're going for the right reason, it ought not matter who sees you in the house of the Lord. Matter of fact, it's a testimony to your faith and the fact that you're coming to worship him and not them when you come with your issues. And Jesus delivered her. I could go all the way through the word and give you illustration after illustration of how people in the Bible waited. Who waited longer, went through more than Job? 42 chapters devoted to the struggles of Job. That's a man who, when you look at patience in the dictionary, you ought to see his picture. When you talk about patience, as a matter of fact, they reference his name. You've got the patience of Job. Why? Because through it all, he learned to trust the Lord for his word. Not how he felt, not what he was dealing with, not what he was going through, not what his friends were saying, but what God had said. So listen at what David says. I waited patiently for who? For the Lord. See, a whole lot of us are waiting patiently for the wrong person. And sometimes you wait all that time and get let down, disappointed, because you were waiting on the wrong person. You should have been waiting on the Lord. And he inclined unto me his ear. Unto me. He heard me. Listen. Listen. I want to tell you three quick things, and I'm going to be through with this because you've read those three verses already, and all that I'm going to say is in those three verses. But point number one, 
He waited patiently because he knew that if the Lord would hear him, everything would be all right. This is David who said, uh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So he knows when he, he prays and God hears his prayer, he knows that everything is going to be all right. Now, secondly, he says, he inclined unto me. Listen, meaning his ear. But what that point meant was that because he heard me, I know he was going to do something about it. And my brothers and sisters, isn't it wonderful to have the confidence in God to know that if God hears you, that you're going to have the petition that you've prayed for, that you asked God for, that you sought God for, that you believed God for? If he just hears you, that means that there is no guile in your heart that you're not being untrue and unrighteous, that you're being real with God and honest with God, and you're laying yourself out before God. There's nothing to hide from God. You're not trying to act as if you're one thing and God knows you another thing. It's like, God, I'm open before you. And so when you know, when you pray to God and he hears you, you know that God's already on the way. Matter of fact, Jeremiah say, while you yet call. I wish I had a Bible-believing church. He answers your call, your prayer, your petition. Why? Because God knows what it is you need before you even know you need it. Jesus put it this way, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God desires to give you his best. Jesus is the prime example of that. If he spared not his only son, begotten son, the only one he had, he gave him to us that through him we might come back to God the Father. And so because he gave us Jesus, what else would he withhold from us? The Bible tells us no good thing. I said no good thing. Thank you, Brother Curtis. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk up rightly before him. My grandmother used to say, all you got to do is live right. All you got to do is live right. God, God won't hold back from you the things you desire. God won't hold back the things you need. All you got to do is live right. And the third point, and I'm closing. The third point is interesting because when he said I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me listen he, he made clear that nobody could do for me what God could do for me so where else would I turn where else would I go when he's the only one who can help me in my situation, out my situation, through my situation, nobody but God. Nobody but God. And my brothers and sisters, when we begin to recognize that when we take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there, it's easy to wait on the Lord when you are in the Lord. Let me say that again. It's easy for you to wait on the Lord when you are 
in the Lord. And, and, and let me help you understand what I'm saying. Because when you are in the Lord, there are certain privileges that come with being in the Lord. First of all, when you are waiting on the Lord, that's a place of peace that God gives to you. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I you. Jesus want us to know that when we are in the Lord, there is a peace that God places in our heart that passeth all understanding. Second of all, when you're in the Lord, it's a place of provisions. Because David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Look at what he does. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. But then in the 27th Psalm, in the 13th verse, he said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And when he says that, then he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, not only is there a place of peace, and not only is there a place of provisions, but there's also a place of protection. Because what you're going to notice when you are in the, in the Lord, can somebody do me a favor? Turn to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. And then I want you, when you get there, say amen, because I want you to read together what Psalm 91 and 1 says. All right, come on. How many of y'all got that already? Say amen when you get there. All right, we'll wait just a little bit longer, but I'm just trying to help you to understand that if you trust God and you are in God, you don't have to. Matter of fact, Jesus said, those whom God has placed in his hand, the devil can't pluck them out. Have I got a witness today? All right, Psalm 91 and 1, read. Yeah, <laughs> listen now, you, 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 when you're in God, can I tell you it's a secret place? Why is it a secret place, Pastor? Because the devil don't hang out there. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking for you, and you're right there, and he can't see you because he can't stand to look on God. Have I got a witness here? Oh, I'm so glad that God's got this thing fixed. And one more thing I won't tell you. Jeremiah said, oh, Lord, he said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Have I got a witness here? Saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you, I said to give you, to give you, listen, an expected end. And next thing I want to tell you is that God, when you're in him, it is a place of promise. God's got some things that he's promised you. Matter of fact, have I got anybody in the house that the Lord has ever made a promise to? Hey, can I throw out one? 
I won't ever leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. When you get lonely, when you're all by yourself, when the devil makes you think that God has forsaken you, you can tell him you're a liar. He made me a promise that he will never, never, never leave me alone. I've seen the lightning flashing. I heard the thunder roar. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of Jesus bidding me still to fight on. He promised. I got one witness here. He promised, oh, uh, never to leave me alone. I'm through here this morning. Isn't the Lord all right? I'll wait on him. I'll wait on him. I'll wait on him. As long as it takes, he's not a man that he should lie. If I got a witness, I want to encourage you, wait on the Lord. Wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on me. He promised you, and he's going to fulfill it. If you don't come today, He'll be here tomorrow. If he don't show up tomorrow, look the next day. All I'm telling you is keep on looking, keep on waiting, keep on believing. Because after a while, after a while, after a while, by and by, when the morning comes, yay, yay, yay. I know he will show up and show out. Give God a hand of praise. I've got a feeling everything. Come on, just tell two or three people. I got a feeling everything going to be all right. No matter what you're going through. Hey! Praise. Come on, give him a hand of praise. 
If you know it's going to be all right, give God some praise. Come on, tell somebody he's coming, he's coming, he's he's coming. I might be waiting, but he's coming. Oh, Lord, I wish I had some folk who knew what I was talking about. My, 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 the doors of the church are open up. If he promised you, he will do it. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Somebody might be waiting on a healing. But I want to tell somebody, if you're a believer, you're already healed. According to Isaiah, he says, by his stripes, ye are healed. Well, well, if I'm healed, why don't I feel like I'm healed? Because you're waiting on the manifestation of the healing. You're healed. You're just waiting on the manifestation. And just like the ten lepers when the Lord said, go show yourself to the priests. They were healed that very moment. But it wasn't until they, with every step, began to walk in faith. Jesus has not forgotten his promise to you. You see, when people want to give up and commit suicide, and, and when they drink themselves into a stupor, and, and they fill their veins with drugs, etc., it's because they can't wait on the Lord. They don't believe that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. But God is not a man that he should lie. He's faithful. Anybody know he's faithful? You might have been going through what you're going through for a long time, but God is faithful. And listen, when he brings you out, he still has the ability to Restore what the canker worm has destroyed. You don't have to get in a rush. God know what he's doing. You just hold on. The late Clay Evans used to say, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot at the end and hold on. When there's no more rope to go through and you've gotten to the end, just tie a knot and just hang on. Help is on the way. <laughs> I wish I had a helper in the house. And if you don't mind waiting today, would you just, would you lift your voices and sing that with us? Because it's a personal, it's a personal declaration that you are saying to the Lord. On the Lord, yeah, Lord. Come on, church, all over the church. Come on. Oh, Lord. I know it gets hard sometimes. Whoa. Take it up, take it up. I don't mind waiting. 
Ring it out this morning. Wait, hey Lord. church are open the doors of the church if you're waiting on the Lord you're in a good place it's a place of peace it's a place of provisions if you're waiting on the Lord oh my goodness God is faithful it's a place of protection it's a place of promise. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But you come to him, the doors of the church are open. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Mm. Lord, I can't do it without you. Mm. somebody right here today God is speaking to and he's telling you to trust him trust him I know you've been waiting I know you've been waiting but, but God is still working on your behalf God wants me to tell you that that the reason why it's taking so long is because he's decided to enlarge your blessing, to increase your territory. He's working on some other stuff that's connected to your stuff. And you've got to trust him. You asked him for this, but he's got that for you. But you've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Our last appeal. The Lord is calling you today. You can't do it on your own. You need the Lord. You need the Lord. You can't fix it on your own. You've tried. Again and again and again and again. You need the Lord. God is the only one who can take your feet out of miry clay and place it on a rock, solid foundation, pull you out of a horrible pit. You're stuck in a rut and can't get out because you, you think you could do it on your own, but you can't. You've got to trust God. Wait on him, wait on him, wait on him. Wait on him, wait on him. On the Lord. Well, give God a hand of praise. <laughs> 